all right all right uh i think the town is okay should be okay uh so yeah as i mentioned in the chat today i'm gonna share a bit about uh what i've learned so far about this game i've only been playing it for like i would say less than two weeks so, some, some, something like 10 days maybe uh i've i've played a lot actually i think i've had like uh how many games on it uh let me see probably like more than 200 right you can see yeah 209 wins so probably like two three hundred games um uh, and it's, it's a very fun game i think uh, a part of it was definitely the card collecting a lot of fancy looking stuff weird looking stuff all kinds of things but also the gameplay itself although it's very straightforward but it also has some definitely some depths and uh strategies to it oh what happened Uh, I'll try to fix it. Okay, yeah, I think... I think it should be fine now yeah because this is not a pc game so i have to uh project my ipad and that's really not something fun to do i'll say okay works yeah sorry about this uh, maybe i'll try to use another what is it called the receiver kind of thing yeah because i just found something online and i was using it I also tried to use the, what is it, the emulator, but that, that's just even worse. Like, it's very laggy, yeah. It, it was working fine the other day, the previous two streams I did. Okay. Fingers crossed. Let's hope this one will work. And it doesn't disconnect me again. All right, so uh, as I was saying, uh, today I was hoping to talk about basically what I've learned about this game a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's a very simple, straightforward game. Uh, I'm not gonna talk over the rules again because I think people are probably already familiar with it just based on the, the intro or the training that the game asks people to do i'll talk more on the strategy uh, of like how to uh play this game some of the at least some of the things i've discovered i mean i've played a lot of card games all different kinds so uh i think for this game uh two main things when it comes to actually play playing the game i know i'll talk about that a little bit but i know a lot of people just collect cards in this game oh uh, they don't even play i at least that's what i've heard but like in terms of actually playing the game i think there are mainly 
two things. Uh, first is deck building, and the second is the actual gameplay. So I'll start with deck building. So uh, this has a very, I would say, definitely smaller decks than the games I used to play. It only has uh, 18 cards per deck, and each card can only appear once, so you have 18 distinct cards in a deck. Uh, uh, I think as a new player, I think one thing definitely uh, to consider is just to start with what you have. Uh, sometimes you get a good card in the beginning. Uh, like the reason, the whole reason I started playing this deck and play a lot of this deck on the latter is that I got the uh, Carolinas deck card from the very beginning, very early on, and then I kind of just start off from there, you know, try to get cards that works with it, try to build my deck from that. You know, because this, there are like over 2,000, that's at least, I think that's correct, 2,000 cards in this game. For new player, it's almost impossible to just have like a deck to play or like a perfected deck to play, optimized deck to play. And it will probably take a very long time. As, as I said, I've played a lot. And this is my... I think I, I was probably even lucky with opening packs. And uh, I think I was only able to build this one deck. Not even optimized. Still waiting for like two to three better cards. Not even optimized. But being able to build this deck was after playing for like 10 days. Yeah, so... Definitely, uh, this game requires time, and so starting off with what you have, that's always a good idea, because you can't have everything, and some cards are very hard to get, and they're uh, very, very hard to trade for, very hard to open packs for. Right, uh, so talk about deck building, or right, once you've identified what type of deck you want to build, right, there all kinds of them. Again, I don't know this game it good enough to say like, oh, there are these many decks. These are the good meta decks. But there are a lot. There are a lot of themes you can choose for history or space. Even within like a album, there are smaller themes, right? For example, here I think there are like uh, the Western Japan and then like for science, there's like buildings and everything. So you can just like literally just find one theme from an album and build a deck around that or you can build a more uh how to say more broad deck with probably just one or two several albums or sometimes some deck just work works with everything right i think there's a there's some deck that specifically wants to have cards from all different types of uh all different types of uh, what is it? Albums. Well, all, all seven albums in this game. Right. So, when you identify what deck you want to play, then it becomes the, obviously, card choices. Card choices. Right, obviously, uh, you want to, when you look at a card, right, any card, you want to consider two things, first and foremost. Right, power per energy, and then power per card. So this is very important because uh, in in basically, obviously, I've only seen two leagues so far, last week and this week. And basically in both leagues, and I would imagine this will be true, uh, energy will always have an impact, right? It could be a low energy league or a medium energy league or a high energy league, but it's always going to have impact. I, I doubt that there will be a league where you just get a thousand energy and you just ignore that because that why have energy in the first place so energy is always a consideration so when you look at a card right it has a energy value it has a power value it has ability so you want to take everything into consideration and look at how much power you're actually generating for one energy paid so sometimes when we look at deck stats, you see uh, the 
you see something like this. I would say this is only useful when you are looking at the average energy of your deck. But it's not at all useful for power for energy, because uh, this doesn't take into account the ability, the effect of the cards. So when you want to actually look at how much uh, power a card can generate, you actually need to look at the effect of the card. So uh, sometimes it's very straightforward. Uh, let me see, like, what is a very straightforward? Yeah, like this one, the dwarf card. So without any other synergies or any other buff or whatever standalone this card it has three energy zero power but obviously it doesn't play for zero power you can see the play effect is your cards in hand gain 15 and your opponent hand cards in hand lose 15 this turn so that pretty much means usually in most turn i'll talk about this more in, the, in a bit but most turns both players will try to play three cards so that means uh, you get 45, your opponent get minus 45, so this is pretty much a 90 point play, which is usually it will be 90. Sometimes it might be 30, 75, even worse, it might be 60, but usually I would say 90% of the time it will probably be a, a 90 point. So 3 energy for 90 points, I would say at least in the card I've seen so far, that's a pretty good deal. What, one energy for 30 power so you want to obviously consider that and uh, obviously like some some of them are harder to calculate I'll talk about this more in like the last item I want to talk about in terms of deck decks like some of them you don't you can't just calculate its power in this turn right it will have a continuous effect on your all of your cards so you also need to take those in, in consideration and it'll definitely get complicated but those are kind of just things you probably want to consider when you're building a deck so the uh, next thing i want to talk about is a lot of times people look at uh power per energy but another very important thing is actually power per card so a thing about this game is it, it limits i would say you're very limited on the number of cards you can play. Uh, per turn it's three, that means per round it's nine, and five round, if you play to the full five round, that's five times 45. Right, you only get to play 45 cards in this game, no matter what, right? Like that's the maximum you can get. You, a lot of times it's even lower than that. So what you find is sometimes, especially in a later stage, because when you are taking, uh, when you take care of the energy and some cards, they the energy gets lower and with effect like that, you find that you want to play all of you will play all of your cards, but they're still not powerful enough. That's when energy is not an issue anymore, but your hands are just not, your cards are just not powerful enough individually, right? Like, uh. For example, there are cards that cost zero energy that, oh, you might be saying, oh, zero for zero energy for 10, 20 value. Does that mean I'm getting infinite ratio? This is an infinitely good card. Uh, usually, it doesn't mean that. If you draw that in a later stage and your energy or when it's a turn, that energy is not a problem, you want to consider, oh, I got to play the highest power card rather than consider the power to energy ratio so in those cases you, you want to see oh maybe this is a very powerful card maybe i want to include that although it might cost a lot although it's not energy efficient but it might be very powerful play like it can generate it, for example in the third round it can just generate uh, sorry third turn it can just generate a lot of power just by itself those are also things to consider. So not only power per energy, but also power per card, because you definitely don't want to be stuck with like five low impact cards in the end, either at the end of a round or at the end of a game, like round four or five. Right. And after that, uh, the next one, 
item on us are league rules i've touched this but mainly it's affecting as as far as i have seen before so far it's just affecting the energy generation maybe there are other leagues where it actually affect cards right energy generation also there's arena but i haven't touched on that i haven't there definitely impact on that but again for beginners like no matter what arena there is this is a, these are the cards i play because if i play other cards they're just not powerful enough because i can't just adjust my deck every week to match the arena or something yeah those are like when you probably have like 10 or 20 decks competitive decks so for this one again like in my gameplay the although i think a lot of the, the players or a lot of the opponents are ghost decks which means that players built them and the bots are playing them uh, i still see this problem and this is also something that i try to constantly adjust in my own deck is that based on the league rules what is the best way to maximize maximize your energy efficiency meaning that you don't want too much energy where you just have floating energy your cards are just very low impact low energy and you don't want to have too little energy meaning that you have powerful cards but you can't play them because there's no energy so that's also something you gotta balance a lot of times it requires tryouts there are obviously straight up energy generation cards uh like the thunderstorm very i think it's a very good one and also like brown bear these are the two that i use uh, but if for example and i also have the energy negation right but for example if i see oh this week energy is not going to be a problem i might cut one of these cards or if i see this week energy is going to be a huge problem uh then i might add one more energy generation like i think for this week so far i think this is okay uh i was playing the border collie card where you gain three energy back very low impact but you gain three energy back after playing it but sometimes i find it to be too much energy right if you can't use up your energy you can probably say that oh maybe i need to change my deck but obviously the this game is a ramping up game usually it's ramping up so you know you're probably gonna run into energy issues not enough energy in round one two and too much energy in round four and five so again we are building the deck finding that balance is very important uh right that's uh energy parts uh and then the the third point i've already mentioned you know you're not gonna have a lot of cards so start with the good ones uh, with your legendaries if you're lucky with your limited legendaries or your mythics and then think oh what deck can i get maybe this is a deck i will try and maybe just trade for those cards in specific and try to get a decently competitive deck and then like obviously as you play more you will get more cards and you can start building other decks uh, and then the next one also similar is just in terms of uh playing as a new player uh usually it's better to upgrade a bad card than upgrading a good card so uh for example like a bad card they can probably just uh, let's say just one energy for 10 power but if you can update that to like one energy one energy for 20 power it's much it will have a more impact on your game than say upgrade upgrading a one energy one energy for 20 to a one energy for 25 but so and also uh it's kind of the there's probably a name for it but like the are the more valuable it gets or the more impactful it gets the more valuable the card is so you will only see Maybe players who's collected a lot of cards to be optimizing their deck uh, to the most. That's why if you want to upgrade, uh, say, a, a B card to an A card, it's easier than upgrading an A card to, say, an S card. Because those S cards are so much more valuable. 
so much harder, so much more harder to find, so much harder to more expensive to trade for. So, but for you, upgrading B to an A is probably even better than upgrading an A to S, just in terms of gameplay. Uh, so again, not true all the way, or uh, in all cases, but just something to consider when building a deck. And then also uh, another thing is want to talk about is uh, tech cards in this game. Uh, this game, there's not really much control to, to speak of, at least based on what I've played so far, not very controlling. Uh, obviously you can affect your opponent's hand, you can prevent them from playing some cards, but it's definitely not uh, a control heavy game in like a very uh, traditional card game point of view but uh, so basically it's like two players they're just doing their own thing but still even this there are definitely uh tech cards you can choose and consider for example uh in this week uh, again this definitely affected by the fact that there's so many ghost players but this week i find the common chimpanzee to be i would say probably the most impactful card in my in my deck that's why I actually I have that on the screen uh, so like literally the I think the the meta of this week and previous week is defined by this step this card the only reason is because there are so many science decks but I think again the the bots the ghost player they're copying a lot of player player decks and the uh, two blacks two blacks uh, in the bones that one it's it runs at least 10 science card and up to i've seen people playing just a full uh 18 science deck with that so this card you can see it's uh minus 30 science for round so if you do some calculation again this is where it becomes tricky when you do calculation it's like they uh, a science even a super black style, they probably play like, I would say, from six to eight, so average seven science cards per, per round. So that means this card, if you draw it on round one, that means you can gain, what is it, like three times seven, and then plus the third one base value, that's 241. That's only for a five energy card. And obviously, uh, as I mentioned, this also comes to a, a second, uh, uh, the last point I want to talk about, like, to calculating a power a card can generate. Right, you also need to calculate the case where you don't draw it on round turn one, you draw it on round two. Sorry, not round two, turn two. Uh, do you still play it? Do you still want to hold on to it? Do you want to do some calculation? Oh, if you draw it on round two, then the opponent is only going to play six cards, and then you probably only will get like 120 or 150 value out of this. And you will see, oh, do I think it's still worth it? But for example, in this week, this is just uh, too good of a card. Uh, like based on the gameplays I've had. Even if, right, obviously you need to consider the situation, oh, what if I play against a non-science deck? Then that the question becomes, how many science decks are people playing what's the meta like so so kind of the similar question to like the traditional tech cards in that sense but again these are just things you need to consider if you're just seeing the same thing constantly again and again and you try to find a way to beat it uh, then these are the things you want to consider maybe not a great card by itself but in the specific meta in the in the all the ghost decks you're facing that would be a very great card to play all right so i think that's pretty much about uh deck building as i mentioned the last point that was really kind of like a summary right when you consider a card like some of them are i wouldn't say quite complex complicated but definitely need some uh thinking like the yellow jacket oh in hand lose minus five until played how much power does that mean per turn uh 
how much power does that mean for this card? Because you can hold it for one, two, three turns, and then also have the effect. Uh, so yeah, it can get quite complicated, but when you're comparing two cards, obviously make sure you take everything into consideration. But also, like for example, this card. Oh, it's 4 for 25, it's pretty weak. But if you lose a turn, it gains 100 permanently. How much can you capitalize on that? Usually, like you probably play a card up to three times in a game, sometimes only two. But so that means, oh, is this card worth it? Does that fit my deck? How much power it generates in my deck? For example, like, like the Linus. If you don't build around it, it's literally worth worthless, right? It's seven power for 61. Sorry, seven energy for 61. It's literally worth worthless. But if you play build or deck around it, then you'll see it's kind of like the best card in this game. Or at least in your deck, right? Not obviously not the best card in this game, but like specifically for your deck, it generates so much power. Like I haven't even calculated this, but it's definitely up to like this card alone. It's up to like 300 power when it's when it's being drawn. Uh, so yeah, when you're building a deck, don't just look at the base value, consider what's the situation, consider you know, how you're gonna play this card, what synergy are there, how are those synergy, uh, how are those synergy uh, being calculated, are they, are they per turn, per round, permanently, until played, all those kind of things, right, and uh, obviously there are also cards that are very slow, Right, like the energy generation card, they're very slow. Uh, the card I showed, the Purple Emperor, that's very slow, but consider how that, that fits into your deck. Even if they're slow, what power or what uh, kind of what effect do they have in a later stage or when things are more built up, everything those are needs to be considered. So again, I think the point would be don't take a card at its Face value a lot of times it needs a uh, very careful consideration like I can give an example like I was looking at uh, what is it Einstein where's Einstein yeah I actually just recently built Einstein like on the how to say like just based on very first impression oh it looks very good but science cards in hand gain 35 per turn when you draw it and this is also a science card so if you do something you're like oh does this generate like i don't know five times 35 uh is, is it like 100 plus its own power is it like almost 200 and then you start realize oh i can only play three cards so that uh, you know and this effect is only for this turn so it's not until played, not permanent, not this round. So that means you can at most take advantage of three of them. So that's three times 35 plus 35 base power. So that's already down to 140. So it become it moves from like oh seemingly amazing card to a great card. But then you start to consider: Am I actually gonna play? I have three science cards. In my hand when I draw this, and am I gonna play three science cards in my hand? Of course, if you are a pure science deck, this will that will work 100% all the time. But for the card I have, you know, it's half and half. That means surely I'll probably only have like two to three science cards in your draw, and I might not want to play one of those science cards because. Uh, Maybe the I I need to play the life on land card. Uh, it's more urgent. So then this sometimes will probably get like seventy points, and then five energy for seventy points. That is a bad card. That is a very bad card. So although I made this, but when I looked at this card more carefully, I discovered this is probably not a good card for my deck. Right. So, yeah, again, you can 
do this kind of Malthus, this kind of population on any card in this game based on its performance in your deck. And again, a lot of consideration needs to be made, a lot of careful consideration needs to be made. Mm, Alright, so yeah, I think that's pretty much about deck building. Uh, I might I might post these videos and like in the actual video I might uh, split them into two because it's gonna go over like 50, 40, 50 minutes or something. It's already like an hour. No, it's already half an hour now. Uh, right. So next, next, uh, the other big part of actually playing this game is uh gameplay, right? As I mentioned, uh, the rules, the basic format, I'm not gonna explain them again, very, very straightforward. Uh, a few mechanics that I've discovered that needs to be paid attention to. Obviously, I wouldn't say I understand them perfectly, but these are the things that needs to be considered. So, the first one is cycling your hand. Right, what does this mean? Uh, as I mentioned, you draw three cards per turn. And you play. Well, you draw up to. Uh, you fill your hand to five cards. That's the uh, best way to put it. You fill your hand to five cards, uh, no matter how many cards you had in the beginning, if it's two, three, or four, or even if you didn't play anything, but you have a full hand, then you just don't draw anything. But you play three cards. So, what does that mean? What it means by cycling your hand is that you want to play your great cards. You want to play your cards. Right, because the only way to draw those great cards, powerful cards again, is to play them. Otherwise, you can't have them again. But you in a game, oh, you can. It's pretty basic calculation. You can probably like see very, and through your experience, you can probably see that most cards can be. Most cards you probably see them like two to three times. Right, two to three times. If you cycle perfectly. I think you will see all of your cards uh, three times, uh, almost all, almost all. But if you lack that cycling, if you're just playing one or two cards per turn, then you're only gonna see your card two times. So then the math becomes perfectly easy, right? Do you want to see your powerful cards three times in a game or four, or two times in a game? Right, that's very straightforward right for example like the linus card the difference between seeing it two times and three times is huge it's very huge uh right so cycling your hand always great sometimes uh and then it comes to the also related to the next one i want to make saving energy right these these two are the i would say the competing forces and this are the decisions you need to make in a game but am I trying to cycle my hand more so that I can get my good cards again? Or if I'm deciding to save the energy and have a more powerful turn? Again, this is, I would say, very complicated. A lot of times it's a trade-off. Right? If you don't save, if you don't cycle your hand, you're not going to get good cards again. You just lose. But if you use up all your energy, if you run into uh, energy restriction, well, you can't play your cards anyway. You can't generate enough power anyway, and you lose again. So sometimes, especially, it becomes complicated when you are, stay like already winning a lot, already losing a lot. You're like, huh? Am I still spending this energy to cycle, or am I just holding on to the energy and uh, hopeful, hoping for a stronger turn? All right, so that's cycling your hand, that same energy, competing forces. Uh, another thing to consider, the next point is, remember, as I, as I said, this game, it's the drawing and playing is pretty straightforward. You have five cards in your hand, you play up to three, and you draw back to five, no matter how many cards you play. What does that mean? That means you hold on to at least two cards at least two cards per turn so that means another important consideration is that it's 
it might be better that you just have specific cards that you want to hold that doesn't affect gameplay but they will still generate power while they are in your hand because as i mentioned you can't play all five cards right so that that means you if you just leave some cards in your hand and they generate power those are like free power almost almost so as i mentioned obviously you have two spaces two cards that you don't play but obviously sometimes you still play those cards so my at least my understanding my current plan is uh, i just have this card the humboldt card it generates quite a bit of power i haven't called you it but like in a like after round one it probably generates around like 10 to 15 per turn on average uh yeah because it the card itself it boosts itself the card itself boosts itself by five per turn so this will be a great card to hold right you're not gonna play all five of your cards why not just hold a card that can generate value and then sometimes you want to have another one or two like for this i have the yellow jacket and i have the bearded dragon these two are if i don't have something else to play i'll hold on to them uh but if i sorry i mean if i have other things to play i'll hold on to them but if i need temple or if i need specific things if i need to cycle uh then i will i will play it right so i would say consider to have one or two or three those holding cards in your deck and they will basically generate energy for free yeah at least that's what i understand so far maybe it'll be different but that's what i understand so far right and obviously you don't want to have too much because again cycle in your hand actually playing cards right if you have five holding cards they don't really do anything right because you're not gonna hold on to all five of them every turn right uh next one again a uh, very similar to deck building right the synergy uh card right you probably sometimes you want to play two of the same two of uh synergy synergizing cards in the same turn uh the temple right you might want to win around or you might have to win this round because if you lose you lose or right, maybe round four and you lost two already so you want to have play those temple or you want to play a very strong tempo early on to drive your opponents out of this round or give them a lot of pressure to play stronger cards or and then like the engine cards you want to sometimes obviously you want to play them early on as early as possible then you need to consider huh if i play this engine does that mean i need to lose this round and if i really want to win this round do i actually hold off onto the engine because obviously engine card their value won't uh, come up until a very later stage like i would say some common example are these the gain energy ones the increasing power ones and also there are ones that increase your give you constant power generation every turn uh, so those are things to consider when actually playing the cards right if you want to win this round if you want to win this turn if you can just give up this round and put more engine in and those definitely depends on the actual gameplay and are things to consider and then also a very important one how much power does oh skip one. winning three out of five rounds is a win this is very important and this is also something that i uh i would say fell onto or fell into the trap at some point is that oh i feel like i can just win i won the first round i feel like i just win round three and then i just push with everything i don't set up engine anymore i use all my great cards and then opponent win and i'm at a stage where i'm lost or i don't know what to do because i've already uh what is the expression i showed my hand basically but so those are things to consider even if you feel like oh i'm winning i might i'm very comfortable unless you are very sure then obviously winning the game earlier is better but sometimes i consider maybe play safe maybe set up even if you want 
loses rounds, it, it get, give to an even greater advantage in the next round, it might, it might even better. And then there are rounds where you are already losing by lots, right? By turn three, you are losing by two, three hundred points. And then you are thinking more like, oh, I need to cycle my hand, I set up engines rather than, oh, I have to push for win this round. Again, it's a best out of five. So balancing resources, that's also very important. And then obviously, lastly, uh, how much power does the card actually generate in gameplay? I would say one part of it is definitely just calculate the power very carefully. Because although I think this game is great in showing like, like those effects that will come into play when you put them on your side of the board rather than at the end when they are resolving. So you can still see, you, you already see that, oh, this is a boosting card. This is giving me more energy, things like that. But, but there are effects that you probably won't see until when the round is resolving. So be careful of those. Make sure that you understand what you're playing and make sure that you don't actually, you feel like, oh, actually I'm playing 200 power, why it became 180, why it became 300, why well, you have to take those into account when you're playing. Obviously, the opponents, they have deck uh, power manipulation tools as well. You might find your card to be worth uh, less than you imagined. So all those are things that needs to be considered. And then, obviously, when you are setting up your engine, when you are holding your power generation card in hand, uh, when you are drawing the, how to say, like boosting deck cards, not boosting hand, boosting deck cards, but you will also need to consider, oh, how much are they boosting, Cause, or how much power am I gaining, because those value doesn't show immediately as well. Well, so similar to what you do in deck building, this is a very, very important to consider in actual gameplay, like how much power your card is generated. Uh, I think that's pretty... Obviously, the gameplay can be very uh, complicated. There's a lot more than that. For example, like I, once you learn more about the opponent's cards, you can start to see like what they might be holding, what they might play, and then you can respond based on those as well. Okay, uh, I think regarding playing the game, that's pretty much all I want to talk about. Uh, not much, uh, at least for now, I think those are kind of my knowledge. There are obviously smaller things, but I would say in general, uh, the the grand on the grand scheme of things, so they're the important part. But uh, and then the final point I want to make is that uh, apart from playing the game, there's a whole other game within the few cards, right? It's a trading, right? It's a trading, fusing, and crafting card. This is crazy. Like I've been following the Discord channel of Q cards and. Yeah, I still don't understand a thing. I, I know, like, obviously I know the rarity, rarity of the of cards, or how they're ranked. And I know some cards are really good. Uh, but still, like, sometimes I say, oh, why is this card so sought after? Or why is this card so expensive? They're not even good. And then there's collection values. There are, some are being reprinted, some are not. Some are, some are offered in a certain pack all kinds of pretty things so i'll say i pretty much still know nothing about trading in this game and it's not quite my thing but i kind of have to do it just to play this game because obviously there's no way that i can just get all the cards but you know always just try to learn as i go and if you're more interested in that i'm pretty sure there are other things other places to look at discord definitely a great place to look at to start but uh, yeah, I think that's what I want to talk about in terms of, I wouldn't call this a guide, more of a discussion or more of a sharing the 
knowledge, if I can call it that. Uh, and uh, hopefully it can be helpful in your deck building and gameplay of this game. Again, I think this is a very fun game. I love how the cards all looks. I like the idea behind it with everything in the, being this game. And the gameplay itself, although simple, fundamental, but definitely still a lot of strategy involved. So yeah, hopefully this will help you. And uh, I'll end the video here. But I'll pause a little bit, come back, get some water, come back and do a bit of gameplay on stream. Take care.